the She Believes Cup, the schedule has been announced. So it's going to be the seventh annual She Believes Cup. It was launched in 2016, a four-team international friendly turban, round robin style. And uh, it was part of a larger uh, initiative with She Believes to just sort of inspire and empower girls and women. A little bit of a legacy left from, from Laura and Holiday as she departed in, in, into uh, retirement. And it has it kept going. It's been it's been the, uh, the, the event that sort of kind of kicks off uh, U.S. Women's National Team Soccer uh, calendar. So it's like they usually have a January camp, right? And then that rolls right into uh, a She Believes Cup tournament. So they, they've won the tournament at times. There's been times when the United States has lost this, this tournament that they hosted when it got launched. It featured a ton of top clubs in the world. Uh, Germany, France, and England were primarily the teams that were part of it. And and in the the later years, it, some some international teams have kind of rotated in and out uh, of this picture. But it's going to be Czech, uh, Czech Republic, Iceland, and New Zealand, who are the 2023 World Cup uh, co-hosts. And uh, so it's, it's, it's an exciting time. Uh, it's going to be taking place in February from the 17th to the 23rd. And uh, I, I'm excited to take a look at it because this is going to be the first for many of these teams in this uh, kind of mini round robin tournament going up against the United States women's national team. But uh, when it, when it dropped, Lisa, we sort of, we had some different reactions to it a little bit. We were kind of like, these are some, these are some interesting choices here uh, for teams to, to be in part of this, uh, this competitions. Uh, what were some of your takes when we were taking a look at whether it's the, the scheduling of it, the teams involved? Uh, why don't you hit us with some of your perspectives here? Yeah, when this first dropped, I think the teams were a little bit surprising and then not the more you think about it. And as you mentioned, some of uh, the big countries that were involved earlier in the She Believes Cup, Germany, England, France, um, they're big teams with really good players and, and top talent. So when you see uh, Czech Republic, Iceland and then New Zealand, it's almost like, okay, like how much is this really going to challenge the United States? Because that's the question. When you, when you look at the She Believes Cup, it's a chance for players that are invited to the January camp to showcase their skills on the field in a friendly competition against a different country. And you want them to be tested, right? Like you don't go into a, a test thinking, I'm just going to breeze through this because then when you actually show up to bigger challenges, you're not prepared for them. So ultimately my, my first reaction was this isn't the greatest for the U S women's national team. And maybe some of the younger players um, in the U S that are called into the January camp to really showcase themselves and what they can do on the pitch. However, when you look at the state of the world and uh, the state of everything that's happening, and we'll get into it later in the episode, games are being canceled left, right, and center due to COVID. And it, it's not really stopping and slowing down right now. So to convince another team to come into the country, travel, risk your players, maybe having quarantine, uh, we don't really know the protocols around it, but there will be COVID protocols around it uh, to really do that to a team that's asking a lot of them so the fact yeah. that they were able to get three different countries to come in even new zealand uh which i that was the one i was most surprised at that'll probably be a great competition for the united states and then when you look at the scope of things new zealand is already qualified for the women's world cup because they are co-hosts so they need competition leading up to the world cup because they won't have qualifiers and they won't play in those games because they already qualify so new zealand is probably going to look for a lot of competition so yeah. that makes sense why they are there and in this one. Um, something else about this schedule drop and the team drop and the game drop is this is the first time that the She Believes Cup is gonna have games on the West Coast, which is pretty exciting. And, and the tournament is also gonna be held in two different cities, which that's a first as well for the She Believes Cup um, because last year in 2021, it was only held in Orlando. So now it'll be on the, the West Coast, Carson, California at DHSP, so Dignity Health Sports Park. Uh, there'll be a doubleheader there. So first time on the West Coast. So for us East Coasters, different timing to watch these games. And then the other city is in Texas, Frisco, Texas at Toyota Stadium. There'll be a doubleheader there as well. So I think four games played in Carson, California, and then two in Frisco. I'm, uh, I'm eager to just sort of, uh, you know, 
take a look at the rosters when they drop. And I'm sure we're going to do, you know, an episode just just based around that. Curious, obviously, on the United States women's national team side of things, but also just to sort of see like what Tom Sermani in New Zealand are, are going to be looking like or, or Czech Republic or, or Iceland. Again, some of some of these are national teams that have not played against uh, the United States very often. Uh, I would say that maybe New Zealand is of the three teams, probably the one team that has the most uh, connection and or ties right uh, to the United States women's soccer team. But I think it's not unfair to bring up all those points, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. with, with the current state of, of, of COVID uh, with, with, uh, with, all different countries sort of trying their best to get in, in front of things and put in place their own protocols. It's, I imagine it's very, very tough to sort of reach out to other national teams and say like, Hey, do you want to come to the United States right now? And, and maybe some of these other countries are like, I don't know about that, buddy. Like it seems <laughs> like a not great time for you right now. So it's just, you know, we, we have sort of seen, maybe it shouldn't be too surprising, right? Maybe that's another yeah. angle we could take here. Maybe it shouldn't be too surprising or, or shocking if we're, if, you are someone who has been paying attention to, you know, uh, you know, the things that are happening regarding the pandemic uh, and, and how that uh, impacts and affects uh, professional sports. Uh, and we saw U S soccer sort of have to deal with this or try to figure things out with this just, just last year, you know, and um, in 2021 and trying to take a look at, at she, she believes cup and uh, some of the teams that got, changed around there it was already a little bit of a challenge then to sort of uh reach out and see which clubs were going to be uh you know invested or interested in, in coming to the united states adhering to certain protocols and making sure that uh, everything was in as safe of an environment as possible you know so it's it's been a little bit of a adjustment for she believes cup uh going from you know, Germany, France, and England, and then rotating out to some some other and introducing other teams into the fold, whether it's been a Brazil or a Canada or or a Japan or a Spain, et cetera. Uh, so I guess in that aspect, in terms of the more recent history of She Believes Cup, uh, maybe that's not uh, so surprising. But this, these are the teams that have been announced. These are the dates that have been posted. I think something else to maybe sort of chat about and, and, and mention kind of adjacent to this is the fact that um, there hasn't been an additional update on, on the January camps. We are in January, right? Doing, doing these, these episodes, I believe last I've seen any type of update around that I think came from uh, Steve Goff of the Washington Post uh, mentioning how there's a possibility of a roster and uh, dropping for a camp to take place in like mid to very late January that maybe there aren't going to be friendlies that stem specifically around that January camp that maybe it's going to be a much later camp for preparation in this She Believes Cup that's going to take place starting February 17th so so we'll see I mean you know the, those January camps uh, if they're going to be impacted by uh, the current rise in, in COVID cases that are taking place. Um, and if that gets kicked off, who's going to make an impression from some of yeah. those camps, right? And I guess that's what we're going to find out if they take place. Who made the biggest impression based on maybe the roster that is set for, for She Believes? So it's going it's to be some, there's going to be some more things for us to have to keep our, keep our eye on when it comes to, to the U.S. Women's National Team and uh, this, uh, this tournament itself. Yes. Exactly. And when that roster does drop, of course, Sandra will jump on. We'll chat about it. We'll yeah. we'll break it all down as we do. We did our wish list before. So now we get to see who made the roster and who made the camp list, um, which I'm so pumped for that. It's just like waiting. I'm waiting for it to come. Um, but these games are, are set and they're scheduled, which is exciting for us because we get to watch some great players and great teams on television which is fantastic i'll run through the schedule quickly for everyone uh the games start on thursday february 17th they will be played in carson california the first of the double header is going to be iceland against new zealand at five o'clock local so that's five pacific and then the second of the double header will be the united states versus czech republic at eight o'clock on espn that's eight o'clock local so pacific time then sunday second day of matches in Carson US versus New Zealand will be at noon Pacific on ABC and then Czech Republic against Iceland after that noon game at three o'clock 
then they they travel they travel to Frisco Texas as the tournament closes on Wednesday February 23rd at Toyota Stadium the first of the double headers is going to be New Zealand versus Czech Republic at five o'clock local so that's central time now um, and the second of the double headers will be the United States versus Iceland at eight o'clock central on ESPN so we get to watch these games uh, ESPN ABC um, the games that are, don't involve the United States their broadcast details will be revealed later. They weren't uh, released in the initial statement. Um, and, and tickets, they go on sale, I think, Monday. I believe Monday. So if you're local to Carson or Frisco, Texas, or you want to travel and watch these games, you can get tickets. Check them out. I'm sure we'll be talking about them as well. But uh, three games for each team. So it's it's a pretty nice setup, especially when you look at, I know we talked a little bit about the teams coming in, but for teams like Czech Republic and Iceland, this is great competition for them to play yeah, absolutely. the United States and New Zealand and then each other in Iceland and Czech Republic. That, that looks really good for them as those teams, um, uh, Czech Republic and Iceland are involved right now in the UEFA Women's World Cup qualifiers that are happening they're actually both in the same group for those qualifiers group c which is uh interesting that they're looking to get more competition amid amid those world cup qualifiers yeah. for UEFA. and get an extra game in right yeah. against each other that's kind of like an interesting angle to take a look at a uh, deeper dive into uh, i do believe in in the past uh, when it comes to uh matches that aren't featuring the U.S. women's national team. Uh, U.S. soccer has been pretty good in the past about ha having like a stream available yeah. on, on their side for those games. So uh, if there's not actually a broadcast in place with the partnerships uh, uh, currently stated, that it's, it's a possibility that that's likely the route that they're going to take again. So, I mean, if people are looking to, to take in all the soccer, I would maybe just try to uh, circle in and zone in on a U.S. soccer site to maybe see if you couldn't catch that mm -hmm. Iceland and Czech Republic game, because that might be one that people want to circle and, and take a look at in terms of the familiarity there uh, between those clubs.